Moving to the EBS. EBS stands for Elastic Block Storage. Now, there is a difference between a block level storage and the file level storage. In the block level storage is nothing but a raw volume of storage which are created and each block can be controlled as an individual hard drive. So for example, this is more like a sand drive what you see. This is a, and I'm sure with the IS background you all know about this, the volumes of the storage and all that volume and everything. This is a similar concept. If you want to make it the life simple to understand, this is like a hard drive which is connected to your virtual machine or your machine over a fiber channel. So elastic block storage, while comparing that, we just talk about block storage. Now comparing that, file level storage is a common storage system which we use in like a NFS and all that file system with our windows and all that. In this case, the storage disk is available with the protocol like NFS or SMB something over there. There. One thing which you need to understand is, in the block level storage, you need to create a volume, deploy an operating system and then attach that volume to the instance. But in the file level storage, the storage device, the handle, storage device itself handles the files and folders of the device. So, based on this, let's start. Amazon provides the elastic block storage. It's more like your sand drives. It's a drives available over the remote channels or the remote chases. Now, it's a kind of a network drive if you want to make it a little simple to understand. So what would happen generally, when you launch an instance, this instance would be here, it would be on some firmware, there will be some physical device, there would be a huge Amazon storage service somewhere, and when you create an EBS volume, it would allocate some EBS storage from that volume, and this instance would be connected to this EBS volume over the remote channel. But so you would say this is a network drive kind of a scenario. Then you would say it would affect the performance, right? No, frankly, it doesn't affect a lot. Reason is, they both would always be in the same zone, same availability zone. So they both would always be in same data center only. So they would be connected over the uh, network cables or whatever the kind of uh, direct cables over there. So it would be much faster there to connect over there. If you talk about the case of the ephemeral storage, it was part of this instance only, but that's a tr transient storage only. The EBS is a permanent good to go or the recommended option, which is over the network, but much better. And if you want to improve the IO, there are ways available, which we'll see over the period. Right? So EBS provides you highly available, highly reliable storage volumes. It's a very well suited or rather it's a mainly suited for application which requires a database file system. So when you need an operating system to be have for database, everything, when you need a persistent data, this is the thing to go. It starts from 1 GB to 1 terabyte in size. I'm sure the most of you start questioning this, what about after 1 terabyte, right? So you can connect multiple EBS volumes to single instance. So you can connect one to number of volumes and every time you create a more volumes you would be able to increase your data storage space plus if required you can do RAID RAID or striping of the volumes together to increase the size also this all possible options are there the best part is or the most important part is the volume is created it can be attached to any EC2 instance in the same zone only so they will be available in the same zone only so, in this scenario, yeah, just a second. So, in this scenario, e EC2 instance and EBS would always be in the same zone. One thing which is very important, we'll see in complete detail, they provide a point in time snapshot for the backup and for the various purposes. We'll see that in detail today. And how does this work snapshot? We will see in detail in a couple of slides. Now EBS allows to create a volume from 1 gigabytes to 1 terabytes. This is mainly for the persistent storage. So EBS would have a high performance and high reliability. 
each storage volume is automatically replicated within the same availability zone. Each storage volume is automatically replicated with the same availability zone. So what does this mean? For the higher redundancy or the better availability of your volume data, it would keep on internally replicating the data to some same availability zone on different clusters. So generally when you see the case here you would have a cluster of nodes available and we'll see at the last second last slide about this in detail cluster of nodes available the UF your block storage if you would copy certain data here it would be then copied to some other nodes also so in that scenario even if the one of the nodes fails the data would still be available to you and the most important part you do not pay for this additional replication if you provision a 10 GB volume it might be replicated across the different clusters you still pay only for this 10 GB only not for anything extra your cost of 10 GB increase includes everything so these volumes are like more unformatted block devices now going in little in depth about this so Sanjeev says then why do we go for a RAID the RAID is more about the performance as well as the storage size increase see there are different kinds of RAID available right one is for the high availability one is for the performance also storage so RAID 6 and the RAID, uh, RAID 5 and RAID 0 over there so based on that you can do different RAIDs over there based on that it's not RAID is not only for high availability it's for the data increase size also and improve the performance so going in detail about the EBS EBS is a distributed replicated block data so elastic block storage it will always it provides you a volume from 1 gigabytes to 1 terabyte size which can be attached to a, an instance or single instance only at any time so at any given time one volume can be attached to one instance only so this is like your hard disk if USB drive EBS is nothing but your like your plug and play device or like your USB drive you attach to one computer now you cannot attach to multiple computer at the same time so in this scenario this EBS volume but yeah you can always detect that USB and attach to another computer same thing would happen here also the best part is this volume provides a concept of a snapshot snapshot is nothing but a point in time snapshot so whatever the data is written on the disk at that moment it would be taken stored in some compressed way to Amazon S3 or Amazon storage service now this snapshot comes with a huge number of benefits for example your EBS itself is a persistence so we know this is a persistence but EBS is always as per availability zone only right now you want to suppose you have launched an instance in zone 1A if you have launched another instance in zone 2 now you attach one EBS volume here if I want to attach this EBS volume from detaching here and attach here I cannot do that because EBS is always zone specific for that scenario what you can do is take a snapshot and from that snapshot you can create multiple new volumes in a various zones so in this scenario the zone 2 would be helpful for you so zone 1 is available to you and you can use snapshot to create a multiple volumes in separate zones so if I just show you in a notepad for the better visibility why this would be helpful to you let me clear all the drawing so for example you have a one EBS volume this volume is part of the zone 1 now this is anyway persistent storage but it is of around 20 GB size for example 
Now you would have a multiple usage of this. For example, you want to, this is uh, connected to one instance. Now you want to launch another instance which should have the same data available. What you can do is create a snapshot, create a new volume in separate availability zone. Now snapshot is always a region specific. Snapshot is never specific to a zone. Snapshot always belongs to a region. So in this scenario, you make a new snapshot and create a volume in zone 2. So in this case, this zone 2 can be added to instance in zone 1. Plus, suppose you want to increase the size of the volume also. So from 20 GB, you want to make it 30 GB. Again, you take a snapshot, you create a new volume. When creating a new volume, you provision that, okay, I need the volume size of 30 GB. In that scenario, you would be able to do this. Third advantage is, you want to replicate, say, one advantage we saw is you can move it to the separate zone. Second advantage is you see is this to create a, a higher size of the volume. Third advantage is you want to create a multiple, keep on creating multiple volumes. You can do that, which we are doing right now. Fourth advantage is this provides the much better durable solution. The EPS itself is a persistence for sure. But due to any reason is that your volume gets corrupted or your data is lost. Or suppose you want to say that every time you deploy something, a new application, you want to have the backup of the previous data. So what you would do is, in that case, if you are deploying an application on 5th of July, right? So on 4th of July, you take a snapshot and now you deploy the data on 5th of July. Now if something goes wrong, you can always recover a new volume from the 4th July snapshot. So you can always recover back the old data also. So this provides you the higher recovery also of the data or more durability. So these are the cases available to you where you would be able to use the snapshot for this case. Right? A few questions to me. I think Abhishek asked the question and left. So, so that companies which have website across the world, do they use the regions and zones AMI as a snapshot copies? I'll show you Venkat, don't worry, over the period. So I think you asked before, I'll cover that also. Um, in Hadoop for master node, RAID is used for mirroring. Where was the data nodes for RAID is not preferred rather than bunch of disks? Can you give one example of how RAID impact performance? Uh, Abhishek, if you are available after the session, we'll discuss more about the RAID and performance because this would be a little different uh, channel to discuss about that. Coming back to, so this is the EBS volume, which will be able to give you a well-suited use of the primary storage and file database for the increasing the size and there are various uses available. Volumes are always specific to availability zone and if you want to change from one zone to another zone, you have to use the uh, snapshot concept only. Now this is a volume life cycle where generally you would have a huge unutilized space available and from this unutilized space, you should create a, you can create a one volume. When you create a volume, you can then attach to an instance if you don't need it, you can detach from that instance and add it to another instance. And if you don't need it at all, you can delete it. It is recommended that if you have planned to use it in the future, just take a snapshot for now and then delete. So in future, you can create back the same volume. EBS provides you the real high persistence. So if I just show you our instances, I'll quickly show you when you launch an instance, And if I selecting my instance over there, I go ahead on the storage part. This is a flag which is very important to understand. This is an EBS volume and there is a flag called delete on termination. Now delete on termination is a very important flag to understand. What happens here is, we want the EBS volumes for the persistence. Now suppose when you launch an instance and if you mark the flag, this delete on termination equal to false, it means even, so when you launch an instance, there would be always an EBS volume attached to it, right? We can see this. Now if this flag is false, so even if your instance is terminated, your volume will not be terminated. Your volume would still stay there. So what you can do is you can launch a new instance and attach this volume to this new instance and everything would be available to you. 
we will see in the practical also when we do the demo part so this is the case of the EBS volume provides you the higher persistence right so all the other questions I saw a few questions I'll answer that over the period because I see most of the things I'm going to cover in the slides now let's go to the concept of the snapshots a little key concept of the EBS so how does the snapshot work see one thing which you need to understand is EBS is never accessible over the internet you say no we can connect that right no you can connect to an EC2 instance now that EC2 instance might be internally connected to EBS but if you have an EBS volume and you want to directly connect to the EBS volume and see that that is not possible it is must that EBS volume must be connected to the instance only then only it will be available right so this is how it would be working for you now going more when you take a snapshot see when you take a snapshot it may affect the performance of your application a little bit yeah because it takes the point in time snapshot and then takes the data and stored over the uh, somewhere in Amazon S3 now when it does that uh, you can even if your instance is running or it stop it would find you can take a snapshot the snapshot is helpful for creating multiple new volumes which we saw we'll see in the demo snapshot can be shared with the different accounts also just on now sorry so now snapshot is at one more advantage or two more advantage which people were asking me since beginning snapshot helps you for high availability disaster recovery the scalability all that aspect suppose you have a volume available you created a snapshot right so everything else this is running or oh, let me clear I made a little more bigger drawing sorry so this is we say this is running in US East zone East region sorry not zone this is completely in region here it is running in East one zone and it created a snapshot right when this snapshot is created you can also do more things you can use this snapshot to copy to other regions also so you can copy snapshot to other regions so you can say to copy to the West region when you copy to the waste region in that case the snapshot is available here so from this snapshot you can create a new volume here which would have this exact same data as this even volume what we had so this way it can provide you better high availability disaster recovery scenario you can keep on replicating the volumes over there and it would be working for you right so this is the one case another case is suppose there is some separate Amazon account completely and you want to give that snapshot to him so you have a in organization you have a two Amazon accounts you, your friend has created or your team member has created one snapshot and they say why don't you why do you create a set up everything again use my snapshot you can do that he can share your snapshot his snapshot with you using your AWS account ID that's a 12 digit ID we showed and then you would be able to access that snapshot and create a volume from this so our snapshot also has a snapshot copy as well as the snapshot sharing concept also so these are the advantages of the snapshot so that's why it's becoming more and it's very popular too for the backup disaster recovery high availability for those purposes coming back to so you can use the snapshot to increase the size for replicate the environment for the copy snapshot functionality over the uh, regions to share with the other user accounts so these are the various uses now how does this snapshot work internally so for that it's a completely incremental snapshot concept so I'll explain you in a minute suppose you have a snapshot available 
this snapshot you take on 5th September for example now this 5th September snapshot is your snapshot one for example initially you have a 4 GB of data this is completely hypothetical numbers I'm giving there is a 4 GB data initially available so what would happen Amazon would normally when you take a snapshot it would be copying those 4 GB of data to Amazon S3 in a snapshot right so this will be taking a snapshot now we consider that okay uh, Amazon would be using uh, writing in some different blocks so we as for an assumption we make a reality comparison that okay this 4 GB is mapped to each block so block 1 is a 1 GB block 2 is a 1 GB block 3 is a 1 GB block 4 is a 1 GB this is completely hypothetical normally it's in a bytes only but just for our understanding so we take that there is a 4 GB of the data available and Amazon took the snapshot so it would be mapped to the different blocks in the Amazon storage services these are the four blocks available there now for example you take a you go to the day two now on the day two some of your data on block one was modified some of the data on block one was modified as well as now your data is stands at the 5 GB so 5 GB means out of 4 GB your data of the block one is modified as well as you added one more GB of the data here and then you take a snapshot so what does this snapshot does is snapshot is an incremental backup now the biggest thing to understand here is this snapshot is nothing but a pointer kind of a concept so when you say a snapshot one a reference would be created in Amazon S3 and different blocks would be created and this reference would be pointing to all these blocks all these reference where this data is being stored so it would be pointing to all these blocks now when you go to the day 2 you have added one more GB of the data let me clear it's too much drawing so when you added it was initially 4 GB now it's a 5 GB data on that day only block 1 was modified and block 5 was edified added so snapshot 2 would be just taking the data of the block 1 which is being modified or we take sorry block 1 block 2 both are modified we take the case here in my example so we say that block 1 and block 2 both are modified so snapshot 2 would create a new data blocks for block 1 and block 2 start pointing to them create a new data block for block 5 which is a completely new added block and pointing to that but since block 3 and block 4 were not modified it would still point to those blocks directly as a reference way so now if you can imagine if you have worked with the pointer concept this is the same concept there would be a if we know the link list and all that concept it will be a memory address somewhere stored and pointing there similar concept here a blocks would be created and snapshots would be pointing to those blocks whichever block is modified during the next snapshot that only modified block or addition of the block would be taken care the rest block the new snapshot would still keep on pointing there only so this way it's an incremental backup only if I go to the day 2 on day 2 when you see that's at 7th September a block 2 is modified again so I change the color of the pen so this block 2 is modified again and block 3 from day 1 was modified now so it would what it will do is when you take a snapshot it would take the block 2 block 3 as well as we consider there is a new block added that is a 6 so now the total size is 6 GB and as one more block is added here so it would point to block 1 here only block 2 here only sorry 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 not this one block 2 is modified so block 2 here only block 3 here only block 4 is not modified at all from day 1 so block 4 here I guess I make a lot of colors so let me make it a little simpler so when it takes a snapshot block 1 would be here block 2 would be here block 3 is here block 4 would be the case where it would be not modified since the day 1 so it would be there block 5 is from the day 2 and block C here 
this way you will have all the new blocks as well as the modified blocks only now advantage you see here what are the advantage of this incremental backup first day the total size was 4 GB of the volume second day the volume size was 5 GB third day the volume size was 6 GB now on the first day when you took the snapshot the total size of the snapshot was 4 GB on the third the second day when you took the snapshot it did not create the wall snapshot of the 5 GB instead it created the snapshot of the 3 GB only because it took the modified blocks only on third day again it did not create the complete blocks it created only 3 GB only so ideally if it takes the complete backup of the snapshot total storage size snapshot size would be 15 GB while here in this scenario it took only 10 GB of the snapshot so it would be saving some cost for you because snapshot does cost you how much we will come in a while snapshot does cost you so it will be there biggest advantage is Amazon has the track of the each the blocks modified so when you take a snapshot if it's, it has to take a full snapshot backup it would be taking more time and affect the performance of the volume since it's in an incremental only only modified blocks would take it would be much faster and it, you would be able to save the time it will be better performance save the cost so that's why this is the concept of the incremental snapshot backup now this comes with some more added advantage also for example you keep on growing your data and after 100 days you have 100 snapshots available for example right so what would happen in that scenario sorry yeah it took me on that you have a hundred snapshots available now in this scenario you may not need to go back to your previous snapshot so why do you need to go for the day one you may just go for the day 10 day 20 only so you can create certain snapshots so it would not delete the complete blocks but only delete the blocks which are referred by that snapshot exclusively so for example if I delete the snapshot 2 in this scenario it would delete only block 2 because when you see this scenario oops only block 2 is the one which is being referred by this snapshot and not anyone else this is only referred by them and not anyone else so this is the case for you so it will delete the snapshot block 2 the block you see this this block 1 is referred here this block 5 is referred here so it would not delay this block 3 and 4 are also referred here so it will not delay so everything would be managed by Amazon and it would keep deleting the blocks which are being managed by this so you would be able to save the cost also so you don't need to worry what was there what is not there you just keep on deleting the snapshot which are not useful it will work for you for example you delete the snapshot of 3 suppose you deployed a version 1 on 6 September and version 2 on 2nd September 7 September and you find that version 2 is not stable so let's delete the snapshot of this in that scenario it will delete this block 2 this block 3 and this block 6 only it will not delete anything else because that's the snapshots are referred by this block only so this way snapshot is an incremental concept which would give you much better cost optimization performance high durability high availability all these scenarios are with the snapshot right now I have a, quite a few questions so I'll answer that but frankly this is very important for you understand so I hope everybody understands I need to know from you because it's not explained in Amazon anywhere this is just based on my experience the different forums I read different people have shared their own expertise based on this is the concept so we need to understand why incremental backup and why it is useful for us so this is the concept here so question is are these blocks a disk block as I said it's just for your reference only we just created as a blocks it would be stored in the Amazon S3 in some different blocks level just for your reference I created as a blocks now Venkat says that the incremental snapshot is metadata or actual incremental backup is taken I guess uh, I answered that Venkat question right Venkat uh, Shiva Kumar said that's an amazing design uh, frankly Shiva Kumar I won't say it's so much amazing because most of the storage work this way only but yes Amazon must have implemented in a very nice way so that's a, definitely a good thing to do uh, Sanjeev has a question that in sh uh, snapshot 2 
block 1 and block 2 will have all data and similarly snapshot 3 block 2 and block 3 would have all data see that's why frankly I, I told you that right this is just for your reference what Amazon does is whatever the block of the data now we know what is a block of the block device right it's a collection of bytes of errors Amazon keeps tracks of the each block is modified so whatever the block is modified that would be copied to the new snapshot now I just give 1 GB as a, as a reference for you to understand I don't believe that it would be 1 GB that's a too big a size it would be in some bytes of data something over there Amazon would be managing for us the important concept to know here is the snapshot is like a incremental concept it works as a pointer to reference and it just stores the data which is being changed not everything right Sanjeev I hope this clears your concept so so that's the question if we want to move the snapshots then we need to move all the snapshots say if you have 100 snapshots Suresh that's what I said right this is completely a reference purpose if you want to copy a snapshot you just copy snapshot too everything is internally managed by Amazon they do not share how they are managing this is for the reference how this works for us yes I'm not saying reference means it's a hypothetical situation this is the situation but they would be managing blocks internally you just copy the snapshot to to somewhere and it would be available with the all the blocks there right I hope everybody clears now so everybody clear this is a very important concept so I spend a little more time here so we all know because frankly when you go to the market and ask anyone how does this incremental not many people know this how does a snapshot work not many because it's a pointer to reference kind of a concept how not so many people know this so that's why I thought let's spend some time clear concept ask cool everybody fine okay so good I hope most of you are I see this still four or five years so believe the rest of the 80 percent are fine too ah, by the way so how many of you are dozing now anyone sleeping knock knock <laughs> okay good I know that that's sometimes for the people it may be little less late though they may feel sleepy I do know so that's why I do keep on juggling between the demo and the theory so at least you feel afresh and that's why uh, so don't worry the demo is not much far away uh, would be there in a while so just in a five ten minutes you'll see the demo so don't worry so till that time you can do this like a uh, pull your eyelashes and uh, on top and then eyelids over there ensure you don't fall asleep coming back to uh, Amazon EBS provides a three kind of a storage service now this is a little new offering from I would say last month generally Amazon used to have a standard volume only around a year and half back they introduced one new volume kind called the PIOPS and last month they introduced this general purpose storage which is called SSD now the standard volume cost gives you is the cheapest one it charge you 5 cents per GB this general purpose cost you 10 cents per GB while this is on a little different way it's almost 12 cents per GB and then there would be little more cost added to that now what is the difference between all three what are these three size services storage devices general purpose this is available from June 2014 when they introduced EBS when you need a very balanced performance and price see why do you use a EBS EBS is like your hard drive right so you would be able to sorry general purpose is a recent not from VBC I'm sorry this is for the case where they introduced last month only when you use an EBS you use EBS for the better IO performance because it works as a hard disk so if you have stored your data it might be reading over the disk so even if you go to the market and when you go and purchase a hard disk what parameter do you give normally you would be giving that okay I need a hard disk with the uh, some kind of read write requirement over there correct that is the scenario normally you do that so IO requirement Amazon provides a three kind of a hard disk over here 
first one is the general purpose where you need a very balanced price and performance this is the go to scenario for you it provides you the availability remember there is a difference between durability and availability it provides a 99.999 of the availability it provides a 10 times more IOS so IO per second it provides a 10 times more IO per second than comparing the your magnetic which was the standard volume it charges you as a 10 cents per GB I'll explain everything so don't worry all questions would be answered most of the time it provides you a bursty IO also so while the instance is booting so we know that when instance was booting it would be copying certain data and it would be taking some time it would be copying it to the boot partition everything so this is the time generally the instance requires around six to seven thousand of IOPS now your standard volume which you take or what is called a magnetic volume provides you only 100 IOPS if you take the general purpose volume it can provide up to 3000 bursty IOPS when it's a booting so it would be much faster to boot but generally generally it provides just three IOS per GB of the storage so for example you provision the 100 IO 100 GB volume it would give you 300 IOPS generally if you provided 30 GB volume it would provide you 90 IOPS if you provide the 1000 GB volume almost 1 terabyte it would provide you the 3000 IOPS also so generally based on the volume size it would be providing you the IOPS and if you use the RAID so somebody asked me the question for the RAID how does it useful see RAID has a two types you can do the RAID 0 RAID 5 uh, sorry RAID 0 or RAID 1 now we know RAID 0 is for the performance the RAID 0 would be where you combine two hard disk as one hard disk and it would be increasing the size of the volume as well as increasing the performance of the volume <laughs> while RAID 1 is more for the high availability so it will be work on a failover scenario if you use the RAID 0 in this scenario it you can achieve up to 48,000 IOPS also so this is the classic case when you want to get the balance price and performance you want to get a bursty scenario faster bootable in volumes all this scenario you should use the general purpose volumes only only challenge with this is it cost you more 10 cents per GB and up to 30 so if you are creating a volume of lesser than 35 GB you should not prefer this because in that scenario you get only 100 IOPS only which you anyway gave with the magnetic volumes if you are creating more than 50 GB of the size it is recommended to use general purpose volume only now in the provision IOPS EBS allows you to give a higher IOS so suppose there is an application which requires a consistent higher IO for your requirement so for example you need an IO which would be you need consistent 1000 IOS, you need consistent 800 IOS in that scenario you can use the provision IOPS volumes if you use the provision IOPS volumes you need to go and say what is your required IOPS in this case yeah. just a moment yeah so in this scenario what would happen is that when you provision IOPS you go and say how much IOPS you need it it can support up to 4000 IOPS so from 100 to 4000 whatever IOPS you require you can provision that and Amazon provides you the dedicated IOS for that EBS volumes so for example an application needs a thousand constant IOPS but it needs only 50 GB of the storage in that scenario if you go for the case where you would are going to use the uh, the standard volume or the sorry general purpose volume it would provide you only 150 IOPS but you can just go and say 50 IOPS and you provision the case of that uh, sorry yeah 50 IOPS with 50 GB with the 1000 IOPS then you would be getting those IOPS over the period of the lifetime of your volume so here the provision IOPS would be helpful where you want to provision a dedicated IOS for your case it would be working for you 
third one which was the older one which is like a which was standard volume is now renamed to the magnetic volume this magnetic volume provides you the much cost effective volume it charge uh, so it would be available to you it just cost you 5 cents per GB but it provides you very low IOPS it provides only 100 IOPS only so if we want to compare everything all these three volumes see in this scenario when you want to use a system for the system root or boot volume you should use a general purpose when you want to use for the virtual desktop or for small to medium database size uh, you should use the general purpose volume only when you have a specific requirement like you need to work critical business application which require higher IO for a higher performance requirement for a larger database workloads you should go for a provision IOPS only when you have very cold workload where you have very low data load not very high IO you can go for the magnetic volumes also in the volume size you can launch from volume from the 1 gigabytes to 1 terabytes for all for the provision IOPS it is from the 10 gigabytes only IOPS performance it can burst up to 3000 IOPS maximum but with a base performance of 3 IOPS per GB per GB it will be 3 IOPS only while provision IOPS can burst up to 4000 IOPS can go up to not burst it's a stable 4000 while magnetic provides the consistent 100 IOPS only costing wise they all cost differently so pricing wise this general purpose cost you 10 cents per GB magnetic cost you only 5 cents per GB provision IOPS would cost you 12 and half cents per GB but it also cost you additional for the IOPS cost also so we'll see all that uh, sorry now one more thing the provision IOPS has decreased the price so now it cost you only 0 0.065 cents only so from 1st July Amazon has decreased the price so it's now only 0 0.065 only so that's why it's now becoming cheaper and cheaper so comparing all three again going more where we use general purpose magneting for the cost saving and provision IO for the higher IO requirements one thing which you need to understand if you are using the provision IOPS Amazon says PIOPS would give you 10% of IOPS performance 99% of the time that means if you have provision IOPS of the 100 GB volume just on so if you provision 100 GB IOPS volume with the 1000 IOPS 99% of the time you would get 900 or more IOS only right one more price comparison and then I will see the pricing so now when you compare how does the price cost see when you go for the EBS magnetic volumes it cost you the magnetic cost you for two levels it cost you for the storage as well as IO cost also it's a very minimal so for example in your application there is a lot of IO happening so 1 million IO equivalent to 5 cents if you make around 10 million IOs in your application it would be costing you the 50 cents only
a, <coughs> I guess there was some connection issue. I'm back and I'm sure we would not have any issue in the future. Just a moment. So, just on a security purpose, I uh, kept two connections now open for disaster recovery. So, even if one of my connection has some issue, I'll always have the another connection running continuously. So, we would have a fine session. I hope I am audible to everyone, right? Okay. <clears throat> so, here you will have a, for the magnetic volume, it would be 5 cents per GB of the provision state plus it will be costing you for the IO. Provision IOPS now instead of 1 to 5 it cost you 0 0.0605 over there 6 to 5 and there is some cost of the IOS also. This both the cost are decreased. Oh sorry the storage cost is same the IO cost is decreased only and if you use the general purpose volume it is cost you only for the storage and IO everything included as part of that it does not charge you additional for the IOs your snapshot somebody asked me how much snapshot cost it's cost you nine and a half cents per GB of the data stored so comp making all the pieces together for example you are running a website that is having a hundred GB size and it will having average hundred IOs per second so your storage cost for the general purpose would be dollar five per month of storage cost that is a hundred into 0 0.05 that is a magnetic uh, standard volume would be costing you this is the cost of the standard volume standard volume would cost you plus since it's making hundred IOS per second so you consider hundred into one hour basis into 24 into 30 so almost it would make around 260 million IOS over a month into 0 0.05 cost so your total cost of monthly storage monthly EBS would be coming $18 in this scenario at the same time if you use the magnetic volume sorry the st standard volume general purpose it would not cost you additional it cost you only $10 per month while this would be costing you $12.5 per storage cost if we compare again where can we benefit from this So suppose you need a 500 IOPS dedicated and 100 GB volume. So 100 GB volumes, it means it would be able to achieve, uh, rather I would say you will be able to achieve around uh, 300 IOS only. So you should provision almost, here I would just make a little change. You should provision almost 200 GB of the volume. So you should make a change to the 200 volume. So in this case 200 GB into 0.10 so it will be costing you $20. Since you needed 500 IOPS dedicated for you the cost of the storage would be something 100 into 12.5. Now we take the lower cost of the IOPS so it would be 13.5. So provision IOPS cost you now $45. If you go for a magnetic volumes you cannot have a 500 IOPS with the magnetic volume because it provides a hundred IOPS only so you need to create five volumes each of 20 GB stripe them together the doing the rate zero and you would be able to achieve this so in that scenario it would be costing you around sixty nine dollars so this way when you need a little dedicated IOPS either provision IOPS or general purpose would be much better solution to use you can do a rough math and you can provision the storage part over there. So this is about the three volumes type available from the EBS and how we can use that.